water straight from the tap. It always tastes really good. I love my well water. But there's something I was remiss in doing with my well water and I want to discuss it with you. Stay tuned. Water quality has been in the news recently, especially because of the Flint crisis and what went on there was just absolutely terrible. It's embarrassing to say I'm a Michigander when you read everything that went on. But that was for testing of the public water supply. In my case, I'm on a well. And the EPA says it is my responsibility to test my water. So I did in uh, 2011. And then I didn't do anything more until just recently. And that really is wrong. I should be testing it every year. And you should test it even more frequently if all of a sudden your water tastes funny, is cloudy or has particles in it, um, smells funny, anything that's off, then you should test your water. And you might say, well, how do you do that? Well, in our state, we contact our local county health department and the environmental protection part and they give you a little kit with two little vials and you let your tap water run for a while and then you fill each vial with tap water and you bring it back the next morning and within three days you have your results. So you might wonder, hey, I'm on a well with groundwater. How can it be contaminated? Well, if you have farms nearby, like we do, it can be contaminated with fertilizer or nitrates from the manure. And if you have any manufacturing, you could get VOCs in your water. Um, if there was recent flooding, that could affect the groundwater. Or if your neighbors haven't been diligent about cleaning their septic tanks, that could affect your water. So that's why it's very important to test it once a year. So I thought I'd share with you my test results. And I'm not showing you the actual report because that gives my address and other information. But I've put the results in an Excel spreadsheet to compare 2011 with 2016. So here goes. Luckily, E. coli was not detected because that's nasty stuff. And both in 2011 and in 2016, I didn't have a problem. In chloride, if you have over 250, it can affect your taste and corrosion. In my case, I was at 27.2, so I'm in the satisfactory limits. For fluoride, high levels can malform teeth. Many city water supplies actually put fluoride in their water because at lower doses it's supposed to help make your teeth stronger. Nitrate as in. Well, I was right in the mid-range, a little bit higher than 2011, but they changed how they're reporting it. And nitrate poisoning is nothing to fool about. Um, you can get nitrates in your water because of manure runoff and other problems. So you definitely always want to test for nitrate poisoning. For sulfates, I was in the excellent area and I've never smelled any sulfur. If you have over 250 sulfates, it will affect your taste and odor. It will stink and it can build up scale on boilers and heat exchangers. I do have hard water I was at 268 and hard water is 250 and what does that mean? Well, it means that I have to be very diligent about cleaning toilets so you don't get that rust ring all around them and it can affect other plumbing fixtures. We were in the excellent level for iron, which is good because that also affects staining. It can turn your water a yellowish orange color affects the taste of the water and it can also leave an odor. For sodium in 2011 I was in the mid-range. Um, they did not test for it this time. We do not use a water softener. 
Um, I'm not sure why it wasn't tested for this time. However, I really don't think that is a problem. And if you have too much salt, it could affect the taste of your water. And if you are on a low salt diet, it could affect that. So there's the results of my water tests. And I promise I'll do it again in one year. Now, if you live in a area where there might be a problem with like arsenic or mercury, maybe if you got mining in your area, um, other chemicals, VOCs for manufacturing, um, just those type of things, then you might want to pay for further testing than your local health department. So there's the results of my tests. I promise not to wait another five years till I have it tested again. Now, if you live in an area um, where there's chemicals in the ground, um, such as arsenic or mercury, you know, if you had mines in the area, or maybe manufacturing um, units, which you have to worry about VOCs, anyway, those other type of water pollutants, then if your local health department doesn't test for that, you may want to go to a national service. And I thought I'd put this slide up right here and it shows you a national service that charges various amounts for each type of testing. And as you can see, it can get pretty expensive. I think I paid altogether $32 for my testing. It was $16 to have it tested for E. coli and then $16 for the other testing. But you could spend quite a bit more depending on what you're looking for. Now if you have your well tested and the results are not what you expected, you should contact your local health department and have further testing done. So I hope you found this video instructive and if you have a will, you'll be testing it regularly. And don't wait five years like I just did. This is Prepper Potpourri saying please subscribe and share the knowledge and thank you so much for watching. Cheers!